So I teach, uh, I teach digital media art, I teach new media art, I teach game studies, I teach computer science, um, and this is a, my, one of my avatars from Second Life, where I ran an art gallery for a number of years as well. Uh, I also play games. I love games. I teach at San Jose State, um, and so that's where the, the bulk of my experience comes from in terms of uh, being a college professor. I have taught at UCSD as well, and then I've also done uh, like little stints in scholarship at uh, MIT and so forth. Uh, so, you know, uh, so I love memes, and some some of this, uh, some of these are probably pretty old. I apologize that I am kind of an old person sometimes, but what uh, what I want you to realize is that you have a huge amount of control about your future, because part of it is because it's so uncertain, but also part of it is that like a little bit of planning uh, early goes a long way, um, and so I want you to understand that like that. That even though like uh, you you know this structure exists around you and it's like really well established, um, you are going to be able to choose the direction. So what uh, what are you do what you are doing? What you like is freedom, right? Uh, liking what you do is actually happiness. And I want you to make sure that you're thinking about creating balance in these things, right? Um, there's going to be a certain amount of things that you just have to take. We've got this huge swath of general studies courses. They are about making sure that you're a well-rounded individual when you get out into society. And some of them are a little bit hard to deal with, and some of it is like stuff that you've studied before. But it really is about like making sure that you have a good foundation, a good space, and then we expect you to drive from there. We expect you to step off and choose the direction and sort of pull every, everything along with you. Um, you can always do what interests you. If, you. if you do what interests you, at least one person will be pleased. So, so this is the challenge at this point, like sort of moving into this. What is it that interests you? I ask, the student, or I ask my students this question a lot of times, and I get like these sort of blank stares, um, because they don't think about integrating this with their studies. Like, if you're taking an art class, like I teach, you really should be thinking about the things that you want to bring into it. If, you, if you're teaching a history class, does it matter as much? Yes, it does. It absolutely does, because there's history that's relevant to you. There's history that's going to like, give you like, sort of the, the background and, and, um, like, and it's going to like, serve your ends. Um, the more that you bring into any of your classes, the more you're going to get out of them, period. That doesn't mean that you won't get into a boring class once or twice. So if you have an interest in a particular thing, uh, say you're interested in uh, robotics, and you're taking a history course. Now it's like, how far back does robotics stretch? If you start to think about like, this, the history of automation um, and how it like, sort of applies in different spaces. Now some, of the, some topics, granted robotics was maybe not a really great example, like especially if you're studying ancient history or something like that. But you do see like the, the 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 things that have sort of like led up to it, like in terms of like uh, like industrialization, in terms of manufacturing, in terms of technology, and all of these like have like a great sort of uh, connection to our lives today. Um, figure out what you like to do, and then figure out how to get there. So the the key to this, and I say this a lot to a lot of people, but like as soon as, when you become passionate about something, you start to develop expertise in it. As you dig deeper into it, you can become the expert. This is one of the things that the internet has done in particular, is it sort of leveled the playing field so if you know more about something than anybody else, you are the expert, right? And uh, generally speaking, the, the top experts in the field get paid to do what they do, whether it's just consulting or even providing information. And it doesn't matter if it's about something like, if you know more about Pokemon, than anybody else in the world, you are going to be invited to conferences. People are going to want to talk to you. They're going to want to hear what you have to say. So, so that being said, one of the things that you want to make sure that you're doing is that you're connecting with your professors. When you, when you enter into school real, or, or into college, realize that the, 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 sort of the hierarchy shifts a little bit, and there's an expectation that there's like a certain amount of communication. 
you want to make sure that you're visiting your professor's office hours, if you can. I mean, well, find time for it, right? Uh, ask questions in class. Maybe not too many questions, because you want to give other people a chance to sort of like participate as well. But, uh, but like sort of like balancing with that. But the professors are definitely one of the people that you want to make sure that you're making a connection with. Um, and this works on several levels and works in several different places, right? So what is it that you want to study? It's a good idea to, to, to think about what you're studying and then compare it to what the school is off offering um, and make sure that you have a couple of options. Because like I said, things are changing. Uh, the, the structure of the university is changing. Uh, the, this, all, uh, everything in this, in this subject is shifting slightly in response to the technology, if not about like dealing with like new teaching methods and teaching and teaching technologies, um, these uh, many of these technologies directly affect the subjects <coughs> themselves. How long does it take for a new technology to get or to have like say a college class that's either referencing it or uh, or dealing with it directly? Oftentimes, what you'll do is you'll see the brand new technologies get added sort of in the end to a, of a degree program. But this is where you have the opportunity to really shine, because if you know these things, if you're keeping up with the, what's going on out in the real world and you're bringing it into classes, bringing it into your education, uh, you, you have this opportunity to, sort of, to, to be prepared for it and to actually be bringing along your professors to a certain extent. Um, but that's, that being said, it's like um, the, the structure of like a degree program is, is Byzantine. It's difficult. It's like a maze, right? You have to figure out how to navigate it. And the thing that you think that you might want may not be precisely what you want. Be prepared to deal with alternatives. Um, be prepared to have a, a plan B, as it were. Talk to your advisors. Find advisors. Find mentors. Find other students that are doing things that are interesting and work with them. The networking opportunities that you get are, are phenomenal. Right? The, some of the people that you go to college with are going to go off and start companies and become fabulously rich and important people. Okay? Um, and some of them are just going to end up being hiring managers. And do you know what hiring managers do? They hire people who they've worked with who are competent and, and that they know. So um, be active and be engaged with that. Um, with respect to like this idea of uh, like you're going to be faced with these like uh, these introductory classes, get in and take the introductory classes that are in your major or in the field that you want to study. Take it early, take it as early as you can, because that's going to show you what's going on in that particular field, what the what the faculty in the university are aware of, and and how they deal with it. It will also introduce you to the people who are teaching it. It'll, it, it will give you that sort of an overview idea of like the possible things that you're going to be encountering. Um, and it will either, it, it may sort of cement for you this idea that you want to actually do this, but it may also tell you that you may be in going in down the wrong path and that it's a good idea to sort of like be looking around a little bit to see what you can do. Uh, fine tune these general education classes. Uh, there are a lot of options, especially at an institution that's this large. Uh, there's like a physics class for artists. What I'm, what I'm saying is like when you have a class that's like in the general studies, like something like physics might be unless you're planning on being a physics major, look for the things that like contact the areas that you're interested in. Um, so in, in the art building, we, I see these people like working on their projects all the time. And what they're doing is they've got these video cameras that are aimed and they're like dropping balls. And they're like measuring like the speed of gravity through using like, the tools that they're going to use as animators. Um, and, and that sort of like bringing that kind of connection together is super useful. Like animators need to understand physics, right? But you can imagine that it's a little bit hard for them sometimes too. Um, and yeah, so, the, just, so just realize that, that if you're struggling in something, particularly something that's general education, there's like, there's tons of help. Okay. There's almost always some, sort, some form of tutoring, and if not, there's also frequently other options that like, sort of like, connect much more with the learning style that you have, the way that you want to, 
to pick up the information. Make sure that you meet your faculty. Um, make sure that you uh, meet with them. Um, make sure that you engage them and make them partners in your education because faculty are always looking for people to mentor. We're always looking for people who are promising and we're always looking to give more to people who want more. So don't, don't sort of just accept what's going out of the class as all there is. There's, there's always more, particularly in like a general class. And that's one of the ways that you actually end up making your experience interesting. So there are some big differences between college and high school, right? I can, you can, I'm sure you can imagine it, right? And some of it, it has to do with the level of Pokemon knowledge, very specifically. I'm gonna bring, come back to this. Well, this is to say that what, if, you, if you are a nerd, if you have a nerd subject, you can find people who resonate with that, okay? And I would encourage you to do that. Um, but it's all, there's also like sort of this balancing that you're gonna be doing, and it's like this serious work-life balance. Um, like, you know, are you gonna have a social life? I actually recommend that you have a social life, that you socialize with people. Because again, a big, big portion of college is about networking. And you need to meet the people who are going to help you make the connections. But you also need to make sure you get, uh, get enough sleep. And you absolutely need to be focused on grades, OK? Yeah. It doesn't need to be like to, to the, ex but it should not be to the exclusion of everything else. That's sort of the point of this. Um, because there are classes that you're going to find more difficult. Um, and uh, you should not struggle in silence with that. You should look for additional help, outside help with it. Uh, so this is to say that I know that a, a lot of the way that people have been like sort of brought into the education or through the education system is about like with a specific set of answers in mind. Um, the, uh, I don't know if you talk about No Child Left Behind. I know that you've probably yeah. lived it more than anything else. Um, but um, what, but this, this changes. This is going to be completely different. You're not going to have, um, you're not going to be, be moving towards a specific result all of the time. Um, and this particularly applies in the arts. Um, and the arts are being much more heavily integrated or brought together with, uh, with the sciences. The people are realizing that there is a, that it has to be, you have to be creative if you want to like, make advances in science. You have to be thinking outside the box. So that's the saying that there's, like a lot of, there's a lot of freedom, and I want you to be prepared to take advantage of it, right? But you have to find your purpose. You really have to know and start to figure out what direction you're going to be going in, okay? That's to say that you also have to be prepared to fail. And I'm not saying like fail a class, although that will occasionally happen. That is not the end of the world. That is an alarm bell, okay? But I want to point out to you that the master has failed more times than the beginner has even tried, okay? And this is like one of those things where if you're trying to, if you're trying to wrap your head around a discipline or some sort of information, this is a happier picture, uh, you, have to, you have to take some chances, but you have to sort of like balance these. And so it's not, I mean, if you start to get these alarm bells, you should be starting to seek help. There's this, there's a challenge. I mean, are you planning on working and going to college? Who's going to have a job when they're in school? A couple of you? Uh, this pre presents other challenges, all right? You have to make sure that you, that you strike that balance. Now, this is something that's like really pretty shocking. Um, in terms of like schools like San Jose State, the four-year graduation rate for San Jose State is 19%. Does that seem low? Now, if you want to go to a school that's got a 91% uh, graduation rate, uh, you're looking at something like Harvard. Does anybody get, did anybody get admitted to Harvard? I didn't. I didn't apply, though, so it's like. But, but this is to say, though, that because of the population that's here, and this has to do with the people who are returning to school, the older population, uh, and, the, and the fact that we're not a uh, $30,000 a year Ivy League school with this huge amount of pressure to get, get finished, that, that, uh, that the that only one in five students that start as a freshman graduate within four years. This is not something, though, that I think that you should be 
that you should feel uh, very challenged. This is, this is actually like an opportunity. If you, this is saying, if you are committed to it, you can do this. But this is also saying, this does not happen all of the time, which means then that you need to do some planning. You need to do some preparing for this. Um, and I don't, I, mean, I don't want to be discouraging because like that, this 19%, I don't want you to be discouraged by it because there's, there's a lot of factors that are, bringing, are coming into that. And a lot of it has to do that some students have to work full time and can't go to school full, uh, full time. There's no way you finish in four years with that. All right, so it is up to you, right? Um, so, so with that in mind, uh, attendance, it, attendance is really interesting at the, at the university level because a lot of schools like San Jose State, I'm, I've been told you cannot grade based on attendance. You are not allowed to. I mean, well, like, what, so what's the objective of the class? Is it to get, or to, uh, to the certain knowledge or is it that you sit in the seat? It's not about sitting in the seat, it's about the knowledge. So, that, but so, so the thing is that as a teacher, I can't grade on this. So what do I do? Um, I teaching art classes. It's important that you come to class. It's important that you look at other people's artwork. It's important that you talk to other people. I try to I try to lecture on things that are important and have discussions. If you miss those, your your grade actually does go down. I don't need to actually worry about that too much. Um, but that being said, you're an adult. Stuff happens. Uh, your car breaks down. Uh, you have to uh, you have to attend a funeral. Be careful about your grandparents. They have a tendency to die around exam period. At least that's my ex my uh, my my observation about it. Lots of grandparents die at the end of the semester. Um, but that's to say that your 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 grades are better if you just having the presence, just being there. Okay. And there's science for that too, actually. Uh, so what you're doing is you're trying to build up these skills. You're trying to build up this, the skills within the area, and you get that from being in the space and talking with the people, right? Uh, you're trying to absorb sort of these learning processes, which are not necessarily spelled out always in textbooks, although the information that this, that's in the textbook is just as useful or frequently as useful. And more importantly, I think, like looking at what's going to be happening in like four years when you graduate, or six years, whatever. Um, you want to develop these, these creative skills that are oriented towards the thing that you're studying. You want to be an innovator in the space. You want to know what's going on, as well as the foundations of what's been happening, the history of it. Um, and with that, every department Every group of students, every large group of students, has a different culture, uh, and so and I see this very explicitly because I teach in art and I teach in computer science. The students are very different, and it has to do with the way that they're motivated and the way that they've been like, and brought up through their like introductory classes. Um, and this is something that you don't get if you don't associate with them. So you need to be prepared to associate with the students that are in your major. And that's to say that the college experience is like is hugely diverse, um, and it's it's wonderful. Okay, so that's to say, um, what is uh, what is the university's uh, perspective on this? The university is invested in your success. If at any point, if you're if you're moving along and you're having problems, the university probably has some office somewhere that specifically focused on dealing with that. Whether it's like you're dealing with some sort of personal trauma, you're like having financial difficulties, you're hungry, you're having a hard time studying, either whether that be a particular subject or something. There is an office on campus that's focused on helping with each of those, and they're independent of your classes, so your professor may or may not know that you're doing this. Uh, I tell you though, it's like if somebody comes to me and says, hey, I'm having problems with this, but I'm seeing someone, on campus and they're helping me with this, I have a tendency to give that person a lot more slack, a little bit, a lot more, um, because I know that they're working on it as well. They're like focused on it as well. So that's to say that there's this huge problem with sequencing of classes and majors change, and this is like yoga, so it's just like, it, uh, but, and it's, I just thought it was like a really great diagram. But, uh, but that's to say that, um, 
that the, there's this huge machine that's operating outside of it that if you're not careful, you, it's very easy to sort of um, fall, aside, fall outside of it. Uh, you need to make sure that you're using the, uh, the advising, that you're also trying to be aware of it uh, as well. Like, make sure that you know what, to, what, to, what is going to be asked of you. Then go in and talk to an expert and make sure that that actually aligns with what they think is going on. And realize that if you're in school for four years, it's probably going to change at least once in there. Um, the, uh, the state system here has something called catalog rights, okay? which means that as soon as you set foot on campus uh, and start into a degree program or start put yourself onto that, you can expect to graduate with those courses that are listed unless you choose to change. Like say, for example, my department changed our degree programs a little while ago. Everybody who, was ex who already was in the program at that point in time had the choice to go with the new one or stay with the old one, okay? These are things, I don't know that I've ever really seen this, this widely published anywhere, but there are like the, tons of these little sort of things that be, just being aware of them can like sort of help you out. So with respect to your first year suggestions, uh, be prepared for the noob experience. Be prepared, it's gonna, it, it's gonna be wonderful, it's gonna be awesome. So with that in mind, like, Explore, right? When you get to campus, go to, go, go to campus early. Figure out where you're going to be eating, where you're going to be studying, where you're going to have fun. Walk around. Experience the place when it's empty. Experience the place when it's full. They're, they're, they're different. Um, figure out how safe is your campus. How do you know how safe your campus is? Do they publish, do they pu publish crime statistics? Is that relevant to you? It, it, it sure might be. Like, uh, so we, this is like a, a, a major metropolitan campus, right? We've got like city streets, we're open. People can just wander onto campus. What does that mean? That means that every once in a while somebody wanders into the art building who doesn't belong in the art building, right? Well, so that's the other thing is like, you know, it's, uh, so be prepared to, to, to deal with your own security and your own mental well-being, right? It really is about this idea of work-life balance, okay? If, you do, if you're not balanced in this, uh, something is gonna suffer. You, you need to take breaks. Your brain needs to have a chance to absorb what it's, what it's had thrown at it. Um, think about this when you're ar ar architecting your schedule, when you're building your schedule. Don't take all the classes that have all one subject. Um, in, my, in my area, it's like we have these things called studio classes. They're studio art classes. They, the students spend twice as much time in them, in the class. So you can take like, you can be taking a full-time course load. What is a full-time course load in college? 12 units? Does anybody know what that means? Again, I can tell you what it means here. That means that you have approximately 12 hours in class. How much time do you think you would end up doing your homework for that? You're like 12 hours, I can get a, like a 40 hour a, a week job. And then I've got like, what is that? Do a little bit of math here. I've got 112 hours left. I'll spend like a couple of those sleeping. A couple. <laughs> a couple. <clears throat> so, so the math is like, if you're depending, the number of hours that you're taking, plan on spending about three times as many as that outside of class working on projects and studying. Um, 12 hours. Uh, a, a semester is considered full time in terms of like for financial aid and so forth and scholarships. Um, but anybody, how, how many units would you have at the end of say four years? Not 120 unless you took summer classes. That's an option, okay. Um, so ag again, this is about this is about balance. This is about like planning and figuring out like sort of where you're going to be in four years, right? Oh, and this is like I don't know if you've been reading about this. The student loan debt right now outnumbers credit card debt in this country. Okay, this is this is something that you should be thinking about for yourself and for your parents. Okay, uh, there are. There are plenty of scholarships that are available out there. Um, scholarships are not purely academic scholarships. You can get scholarships based on who you are, uh, what you're studying. 
But, um, but specifically, like if you are eligible for loans and if you need to take out loans, realize that the loan officer, even at the school, is not necessarily your friend, okay? Do not, the, the, the loan officer will say, take out as much as you can. Don't do that, take out what you need. Like dial it down, you want this to be a smaller number, regardless of who's paying for it, regardless of who's sh shouldering this at the end of it, um, because, because you don't want to be forced with a, I, er, you know, or with making the hard choices about graduating and jumping into something immediately to start paying these down. Now, you, you do want to get a job as soon as you graduate, but you want to get the job that's in your field, that you've been working for, that you've developed the expertise for. Many students work the entire time that they're at school, um, and a lot of them and in turn, I mean, are inspired by the work that they're doing. Uh, they end up getting promoted and, and, and sort of moving through it. If you see this as a career that you're interested in, you can craft your college experience to add to that. Okay, uh, there is a bit of a challenge with when you're working at a place and your your qualifications change. Sometimes it's difficult to get that acknowledged. That depends on the place that you're working. At. Like if you suddenly get a bachelor's degree, and you've been working in a particular place for the entire time that you were there, uh, do they acknowledge? Will they acknowledge that you are more qualified? Uh, how will how will that particular uh, uh, company re respond to it? And, and that really depends on the, on the people who you're working with more than anything else, the company. And, and this is true, and this is one of the challenges that we face. And there are some real serious conversations going on about the value of a college education. Like, um, and I don't, I, I mean, I don't wanna push people away from it because I think that there are some, that there are some really serious benefits to it. But you are taking four years of your life and you're, and you're sort of like, if you, don't, if you don't continue to work, if you don't continue to learn, you're sort of setting yourself on hold for that. So you need to think about like, what is it that I can achieve in this space, in this time? All right, so, so again, this is like about thinking about like build your, the networks that you're building for the future, the contacts that you're making, the, the knowledge that you're learning, the, the, the things. So this is like, this is back in my day, right? This is like the old school social networking site on my desk. My desktop, which was an actual desk, right? Um, but the other thing is that I really want you to be Brain aware. Brain on a stick. Right? Well, so, th so, so a, a little bit of empathy is really useful in this. And it's useful from my perspective as well as from your perspective. If I have a hundred people in the room, how well, what am I going to get to know about you? What am I going to What am I going to be able to do? Um, I'm tasked with teaching you this material, right? And the and the university is pretty good about telling me or helping me figure out what the right size of that is, right? For the average person, which is nobody in the room, right? So I have to figure out ways to try to push that in, and then verify that it, that it's there, okay? Even if it's just for the 15 minutes that it takes to take the test, right? Yeah, just coming in and talking, um, uh, I, learn, I learn about my students' hopes, dreams, what they want to, what they want to do, what they hope to get out of the class. Um, it's, it's just about making that personal connection, um, and that is super valuable. So if you, you want that icebreaker to come in yeah. first, and then you can proceed with the material. Um, it makes it a little bit easier for the student to learn, but it also makes it easier for, it gives me a little bit more perspective as an instructor. I mean, do your colleagues follow that same type of protocol? It's, uh, it's sort of, I, I want to say it's unspoken, but it has to do with relationships, right? right? If, you're, if I'm staring out into a sea of faces, I can kind of tell who's paying attention, but, and I can kind of tell who's drifting off somewhere else. And I don't know that the person who's drifting off somewhere else is like, uh, is in, is changing apartments? Is you know what I'm saying is like is dealing with these real world issues that that I can understand, and then I can say, well, hey, hey, you know, it's like there are ways to get more information or to connect to this a little bit more easily, that sort of thing. I'm suggesting that you use this to your advantage to make the social connection, because it's a lot harder to fail somebody whose name you know and who who you've who you've worked with. 
um, there are uh, there are always problems in a semester, and somebody will like I'll be looking at the grade book, and somebody has not turned in something. Okay, um, I don't have to do anything at that point in time. I always do, but it, but particularly if I look at that, I'm like, oh, this person. We were talking about this at the beginning of the semester, and they had a real serious issue. Okay, so send an email, say like, what's going on here? What what happened with this? And 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 I have I'm plugged into it a little bit more. Um, even just the people who I end up casually talking to, sort of even in the halls or during the office hours, um, I I feel a little bit closer to them. I feel like I understand it a little bit better. You want to take advantage of everything. That, if you're always looking to take advantage of everything that's being offered to you, you will do better. And that's really what I'm suggesting. Do better. In college, you can do what you want. I, I, I introduced Minecraft to my students because I wanted to, right? I put World of Warcraft onto lab computers in the art department because I wanted to. I had to justify it to them. It took a couple of years to figure out exactly what I was doing and put it into terms that they could understand, but in the end, they did it. You've achieved success in your field when you don't know whether what you're doing is work or play. I want you to bring, I want you to find a way to bring some joy to what it is that you're doing because that makes, it actually makes you do it a lot better. You, you work a lot better if you enjoy what you're doing and that's not to just say that like you work longer hours but you're, you're more efficient at it. You're actually looking for opportunities. Uh, so just be aware that there's less structure. You know, if you, if, you have, if you think you have free time, you probably have forgotten something, right? And this is, this is the advice. And the academic, the, this idea of the academic plan, it's, uh, you, it's both formal and informal. And it's about thinking about like what it is that you're going to be learning and doing, sort of along the ed or along the the edge of it here. Work-life balance. Make sure that you have a chance to rest. Make sure that you have a chance to think. Uh, remember, you're building networks. You're building networks all of the time. Keep in touch with the people who are doing things that are interesting. Uh, after, if you communicate with a professor after a class that you took, particularly if you did well, that turns them into a contact as well, or a connection. Remember that the jobs of the future, many of them we don't know what they are. I, I can't tell you, nobody can tell you, right? Um, if you think about just like the last three or four years, the things that have changed in the world, how are you supposed to prepare for a job if you don't know what it's gonna be? Well, well so, so what you want to do is you want to like push into, this, into the individual spaces. You want to look at things in terms of like the creativity that you can br or bring to it. You want to be prepared to be working with the materials and the information. You want to be a good writer and a good reader because those aren't going to go away. Okay? And, the, and a good researcher. All right? And then you want to have good habits and be able to like sort of further your own practice. You want to be independent in your scholarship and in, in the things that you're doing because, because that's how you're going to be following your interests, right? Yeah, I guess I should say, are there any questions? Yes? What sort of advice do you give your professor? Are you dealing with uh, hundreds of students per semester? Yeah, each 125 one, this semester. Each one comes with different experiences of emotional, social, mm -hmm. educational, um, rich that is professor. So part of that is that some people just need to sort of work through the system and see how the people around them are, are, are behaving. And part of that is about the culture. But as a professor, I specifically target different ways of reaching students. Um, so I do, I do a certain amount of lecture. I do a certain amount of group exercises. We do certain things on the, in the learning management system. We do a few tests, um, and that's part of that is because everybody performs differently. Um, the real core things within a particular discipline, I try to lead up to those, sort of gently realizing that some people are going to be quiet through most of the critiques that they have in my class. Now, if you can't talk about your work at all, ever, you're gonna have a real hard time in the arts. You just, you just will, because it's, there is something about the communication. 
Um, it does, but it doesn't matter if you pick that up in the first class that you take with it, or the third class, um, if your work is sort of reflecting that you're, act, you're learning the, the, to use the tools and the abilities and expressing yourself. There's a, there's a balancing point for all of it. <coughs> and so I, tried, I just try to meet the students where they are. What happens if you really don't know what you want to do? Like, there are a lot of things that I'm interested in learning about, but I really have no idea what field I want to like study in or work in. So the nice thing about something like San Jose State is you've got like a lot of general education requirements. And what that'll do is that'll put you on campus with other students that are studying from other disciplines. Um, so I, I would be tempted to dive into those. Uh, but then don't lose the opportunity to realize you're going to be taking classes in different areas. Pay attention and see what other people are interested in. See if you can find something through that. Use the club system. There are club, there's clubs for everything. Um, and, the, these, and the people who go to the clubs, many of them are people who are like anticipating that they want to be there in the future, but a lot of them are people who have just a huge amount of passion for it. And, some, and frequently you can learn things in a club that, that are like way beyond what you could learn in a classroom because there just aren't any restrictions on it, right? The people are bringing their own, their own knowledge and their own passion to it. Um, and uh, do uh, career counseling. Do as much career counseling as you can possibly do because those people are trained to pay attention to your skills and interests and to try to align them then with things that will, uh, that will then sort of feed those interests or that will like sort of, uh, like I said, align with it. Do you have a question? Yeah. Yes, I do. Are you done? I, I think so, yeah. Okay. What advice do you have for students with learning disabilities? Um, realize that the university is committed to this. Um, like San Jose State actually has, um, what is it, the AEC? I don't remember the name of it. Um, it used to be the DRC, they changed the name and that's why I have a hard time with it. But what it is is that they will do an assessment uh, of, the, of the individual and then they will provide accommodations, okay? And so what, uh, at the beginning of every semester I try to make sure that my students are aware that I want these accommodations because what they do is it tells me what I need to do to, to work with that particular student. Some students need more time on tests, some students need uh, to to be able to take breaks more often. Um, and I don't have the ability to make that, those kinds of assessments, but the AEC does. And then they basically, they, they, give, uh, they give the individual student a, a, a sheet to deliver to their classes, uh, to the instructors, and the instructors are expected to, sort, to accommodate them. That's what we do at the university. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Wait, so do like mo all or like most universities have that kind of system for like evaluating for accommodations and also like do you do go on your own accord or will they like inform everyone about this? Um, I, so I don't know like, how. As in, do you yeah. have to do the research on the university to find it out? Or will it already like advertise itself? Like, how much do you have to do on your own? My, my guess is that that will depend a lot on the, univer on the individual university. I don't know how students are approached by it in, at this institution. I do, however, um, when I'm talking to students, if, I, if somebody self-identifies, and I, I try to, I'm not judgmental about it, but it, I try to get them into the system, because then it, it, it's an official, uh, then it's officially recognized. Um, and, the, and just that, and the sort of spelling out the level and the type of accommodation really helps me a lot. But I, uh, at other institutions, I couldn't, I couldn't say, honestly. I expect that all state institutions would have some level of, of accommodation, as would probably most private institutions. So, so, the, so being a college student is something different to everyone, right? Uh, it's, it's a huge opportunity, and I'm, I'm a big fan. I think you've all got like, there's like a bright future out in front of you if you just want to take it. So, thank you.